welcome back. I hope that you were able to do a little physical warm-up before each of your practice sessions, and even before our meeting today. Last time, in addition to learning orally and discussing relaxation techniques at the piano, we explored intervals and note reading in more depth. Today, we're going to delve more deeply into chords, and we'll even harmonize melodies with three-note chords, rather than with just single notes or two-note harmonic intervals. Let's begin by getting our fingers warmed up with all seven of our five-finger patterns and chords. Now, I'll bet you thought that I was going to begin with C, didn't you? Actually, I'd like to begin with a different key this time. Let's begin on G and work our way around to F. The reason I like to begin in a different key every few days is partially because we don't want to get into a rut, but mainly because of human attention and its role in learning new things. Humans tend to focus really well at the beginning of an exercise or even a lesson, so the first few scales get better. However, if our concentration and attention wane toward the middle or end of our routine, the musical result is that the last few keys don't progress or improve as much as the first keys. The result, after, after several days of practice, is that the first keys keep improving while the last keys don't ever get quite as comfortable. So, I'd suggest mixing it up a little. Are your hands over the G pattern? If so, let's begin on G today. Once we finish G, I'll give you four beats to move up a step to A. Then we'll continue in a similar fashion until we finish playing F. One, two, and play. Now up to A. One, two, play B. One, two, here C. One, two, now D. One, two, and E. One, two, here's F. Do you feel confident with our newer key F? We only learned it this last time, and it tends to be uncomfortable for some people. So let's play F major one more time, and let's move it down a little lower this time. One, two, and play. I also wanted to do F again because that will be the key of our new exercise. As I mentioned earlier, we are going to learn more chords today. In any key, we can build a chord on any scale degree. Recall from our earlier lessons that a scale degree is just the number of the note in the scale, starting from the first scale degree one to the last. For now, we only know five finger scales, so scale degree five is the highest that we know in each scale. This will change soon, but it's all we need for now. It turns out that the most common and most important chord tones in any key are built above scale degree 1, 4, and 5. What do I mean by that? Well, remember, a chord is just three or more notes stacked up in thirds. We already know the chord that is built on the first scale degree. It's what we've been practicing with our five finger patterns. So we'll call it the tonic chord. So in F, you'll play F, A, C, or an F major chord for the tonic chord. Let's do this chord with the left hand, since that's the hand that is often responsible for supplying the harmony. 
Now let's build a chord on the fifth scale degree, which we also know as the dominant. So we move our hand so that the fifth scale degree is on the bottom. In this case, C is under the pinky. Now we stack up the notes in thirds, or we skip up to the third finger, and then skip up again to the thumb. On the bass clef, you'll recognize the thirds stacked on top of one another by the space, 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 or line, line, line pattern. Now let's figure out the chord that we build on the fourth scale degree. Remember that the fourth note in the F major scale was a B flat. So we stack up the thirds on top of the B flat. You'll end up with a B flat, D, and F. And feel free to adjust your wrist a little so you can reach this chord comfortably. When we build a chord on the fourth scale degree, or the note immediately below the dominant, we call it the subdominant chord. We represent it with an uppercase Roman numeral four. And we use uppercase because, as you can hear, it's a major chord. Certain chords lead toward or have a tendency to go toward certain other chords. And of course, there are rules about where sh chords should go. For example, in the Western musical tradition, the dominant leads to the tonic. And this is known as a resolution, as it sounds very satisfying to our ear. We've heard this resolution quite a bit already in our pieces. But the subdominant can also lead to the tonic. This gives us the typical amen ending. This too is a resolution to the tonic. When we have two chords that we resolve like this, say, or, at the end of a piece or a phrase, we call it a cadence. It should sound and feel like a resting place. But other chords can form a progression, if you will, leading toward the cadence. For example, the subdominant chord does not have to go directly to the tonic. It can also go to the dominant. So one typical chord progression is this. One, subdominant, dominant, to tonic. This tonic, subdominant, dominant, tonic progression is the most basic chord progression at the heart of Western music. So we call it the primary chord progression. Today, we are going to do that progression with our three note chords as we just learned them. You'll see that there is a little bit of jumping around when we play it this way, but it's a good place to get started. So will you play with me? Let's start on the F a little lower. We'll play F tonic. Now jump up to B flat, subdominant. Jump up a step to the dominant C chord. And back down to the tonic F. So try it with me one more time. We begin with the left hand, an octave lower than where we have been, where I just played it. And this is going to, uh, going to allow you room to move your arm with ease. Let's do the left hand alone. We begin with F, our tonic chord. We keep our hand relaxed, but the shape of the chord is still in your hand while your pinky jumps up to the B flat. Then, as we land with finger number five on the B flat, we'll play the rest of the notes in the chord. To get to the dominant, we don't have to jump far. We're just going to grab the C with the pinky and then the C major chord. You'll be playing all white keys. And then move on back down to the F chord. Let's try that again. This time, I'd like you to play each chord twice. We'll hold each chord for three beats, then take one beat to move to the next chord. It measures two, four, and six. Since we'll have four beats in each measure, I'll count to four. If you get lost, you'll know where I am by my counting. As you hear me say three or four, prepare your hand for the next chord and try to play it with me as I say beat one. I'll also note some chord names as we play the first time. Here we go. One, two, three, four. F, two, 
two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. C. Two, three, four. Two, three. Down to F. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. I think that we should try that again, as typically my students get lost when they first play this exercise. One, two, here we go. Two, three, four. Two, three, move. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, move. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Playing the progression in this manner is actually trickier in some ways than another way that we'll learn to play it in a couple of lessons. But playing the progression this way will help you to, first of all, learn to name and find chords efficiently. Second, it will help you to remember the notes in each chord. And third, you will more easily choose notes for melodies that you're going to improvise. Please practice this chord progression in F and C major this week. We'll look at C in a few minutes. In the meantime, let's try to improvise a melody above our F major primary chord progression. You'll see that just as we did a moment ago, we are going to play each chord for two measures. I would recommend that you play quarter note rhythms in the right hand to begin with. You can create more complex rhythms once you've identified some suitable pitches for your melody. And I'm going to offer some ground rules for this improvisation. One. Play mostly notes contained in the left hand chord. So, when you have a tonic chord, play mostly Fs, As, and Cs in the right hand melody. When you have a subdominant chord, play mostly B flats, Ds, and Fs in the melody. And when you have the dominant chord, play mostly Cs, Es, and Gs. We'll call the notes contained in each chord chord tones. Two, try to play chord tones, not other notes, which we'll call non-chord tones, on the downbeat or first beat of each measure. And three, end your melody on the tonic note. If you follow these guidelines when you have an F chord, the majority of the pitches in the measure will be Fs, As, or Cs. You will likely want to play other notes, that is to say non-chord tones, but try to avoid playing these on the first beat of each measure or the downbeat. They will sound very dissonant on the downbeats, and we haven't learned how to resolve those properly yet. Remember, you can repeat notes in your melody. You may also play non-chord tones, provided those don't occur on the downbeat. Just listen to make sure that they sound good to you. To familiarize yourself with the notes that the right hand will choose from for the melody, let's try the primary chord progression with the right hand only. We'll begin with the right hand on F. Now move up to the B flat, the subdominant. Up to the C chord. And back down to the tonic. I think that you're ready to improvise. Now, I should warn you that you probably won't sound like Beethoven yet, but see what you can come up with. When you find a melody that you like, notate it in the blank spaces on the treble clef staff in your workbook. Let me give you one example of a possible melody for this chord progression. It's your turn. I'll play the left hand chords, and you can improvise your right hand melody. You might want to pause the video here and find a melody that you like. If you're feeling really adventurous, you could try adding the left hand. However, when you are moderately satisfied with the melody, play the video from this spot so that you can play your melody with my accompaniment pattern. Remember, there's a repeat sign at the end here. Here we go. One, two, three, four.
it sound. If there were places that you didn't like, try another note and see how you like the new sound. Repeat this section as often as you would like. We'll also try it again at our next lesson. I hope you enjoyed that improvisational activity. Before we move on, let's take a quick break. I feel like I need to do a couple of shoulder shrugs and some shoulder rolls. Will you join me? I'm also going to breathe deeply as I do this. If you notice tension anywhere else, take a moment and do a gentle stretch. In fact, I'm going to stand up and swing my arms a few times. Now that we've taken our little break, let's play Oralie from our last lesson to see how you're coming along. One, two, three, play. go. I hope you're noticing the improvement you're making from your practice. As we've noted previously, not playing our best the first time through isn't uncommon when we begin piano study, since we're learning new and complicated music. So let's try it orally one more time together. One, two, three, play. to move on, but if you feel that you can play orally even better than you just did, please rewind or pause the video here and try it again. The other piece that I'd like to review from the last lesson is Woodland Jaunt. Your right hand will be in the same position it was in for the last example. Feel free to let your left hand rest and just try the right hand with me first, even though I'll play both hands. One two, and play. Now, let's play the left hand alone to ensure that you have learned it correctly. Remember, your left hand is not in a C major position in this example. So you'll shift your left so that finger two is on the C below middle C, or base C, and your left hand finger number five is resting on low G. You will also need to play the A, which is under finger number four in this example. Let's try the left hand alone. One, two, three, play. Two. Now, let's try this example playing both hands. One, two, three, four, one, two, and play. play this one more time to ensure that you are starting to get comfortable with the piece, since some people may find it a little tricky to coordinate the hands. One, two, three, play. recognized that Woodland Jaunt is in the key of C. I'd like to explore how we might harmonize this piece with complete chords rather than single notes. So let's figure out our primary chord progression in C major. 
So if we place our left hand over the C major 5 finger pattern, we see that the first scale degree is C. So the C major chord will be our tonic chord in the key of C. In the key of C, F is the fourth scale degree. Thus, the subdominant chord will be F major. And G is the fifth scale degree, so we build our dominant chord on top of it. These chords contain only white keys in C major. So let's play that progression together once. First C, then up to F, up to G, and we'll go back to C. At the next lesson, we are going to harmonize Woodland Jaunt with these chords. But if you think back to the melody of Woodland Jaunt, you'll recall that the right hand played middle C several times. So I'd like to take a moment to explore another way this chord progression, uh, another way to play this chord progression so that the left hand won't interfere with the right hand melody notes. We can play the tonic chord as we just did. Now, let's move the left hand up to the subdominant chord as we just practiced it. So you'll notice that the left hand thumb is playing middle C that we will need for our right hand melody. So an alternative is to move the left hand F major chord down one octave to here. Now, when we play the dominant chord, we can simply move the left hand up one step. You'll see that we're playing uh, the G major chord an octave lower than we did a moment ago, but the left hand thumb won't interfere with the right hand melody. And to resolve the dominant chord, rather than going too low on the keyboard, let's just jump up to the original C chord. Resolving the dominant to tonic in this fashion means that your left hand will leap up a fourth. I find that using my left hand thumb as a guide, leaping up from D, up a fourth to the G, ensures that I land on the tonic chord accurately. Let's try this new way of going from a dominant to a tonic a couple of times. So start on your low G chord, and go up to your C chord. Go back down to low G, and up one more time. Now, let's try the entire chord progression using the subdominant and dominant chords that are lower on the piano. Start on C, go down to the F, up a step to the G, up a fourth to the C chord. Please practice this way of playing the primary chord progression in C before our next lesson. Next time, we'll try harmonizing or adding chords to the Woodland Jaunt melody, and we'll need to be able to play them this way. I have one more piece that I'd like us to begin learning today. It's another piece by Kohler, who's becoming our favorite composer so far. <laughs> the melody is as he wrote it, but I've arranged, arranged the left-hand harmony to include some of the intervals that we've been working on for the past several lessons. The original melody is from a larger work, Opus 218. Opus is the word for work. Incidentally, the plural of opus is opera, because opera were originally numerous works joined together. The number 18, following the opus number, tells us that it is the 18th piece in that particular collection. For almost all composers, we identify their music by an opus number. Opus is often abbreviated as OP. Now that we've had our mini music history lecture, I'll play the piece for you. watching my hands, you probably noticed that this was in the key of G major. Did you hear any faster notes in my right hand? Go ahead and tap quarter notes at this tempo. One, two, three, four. You can tap in your lap as I play this time. I'll count you in. One, two, tap, tap.
did you hear the faster notes that time? I'll play it one more time. Try to clap the rhythm of my right hand melody as I play. One, two, here we go. How did you do? Hopefully you got the faster notes and noticed that it was easier if you clapped those lightly. Let's try clapping the rhythm of the melody once. One, two, and clap. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. And one, two, three, four. Now, let's see how this looks on the staff. Do you see how we notate those faster notes in measure three? These are pairs of eighth notes. Two eighth notes equal one quarter note, so they are twice as fast as a quarter note. Let's see if we can play the right hand only for the first four measures. Notice that we begin a third above landmark G on B with the third finger. From there, we move up by step to D. Then we leap down a fifth to landmark G and go up by step to B. Then we step down to A, we repeat it, and we immediately go up a step and back down a step and repeat that little motive. So let's try the first four measures with me. You can either shadow the right hand notes or play them out loud. I'll go a little slower. One, two, three, four. B, step, down to G. Three, four, A, A, step. One, two, three, four. Now, let's try those measures again. If you shadowed the last time, try to play out loud this time. One, two, and play. You'll probably need to practice this a few more times before you gain control over the notes and rhythms because there is a lot going on here. The good news is that measures 5 through 7 are just like measures 1 through 3. So once you learn the first line, you already know most of the piece. Next, I'd like to draw your attention to the left hand. Again, we'll just look at the first four measures right now. We begin with the interval of a third with G on the bottom and B on the top. In measure two, we have another third. Now B is on the bottom and D is on the top. You won't need to move your hand for this. In fact, it's just the bottom two notes of your G chord, then the top two notes of your G chord. In measure three, we have a second with the D on the top and middle C right below it. And remember, we play these precisely together as harmonic intervals. In measure four, we have single notes, a B for beats one and two, and a C for beats three and four. Try the left hand with me. One, two, three, four. 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 Okay. I'm going to play both hands together for the first four measures. You can try right hand or left hand or even both hands. Here we go. One, two, three, four. I hope that you'll learn all of this hands together before our next lesson. Well, this is a good place to take a deep breath and to do some shoulder shrugs and close for today. For next time, please work on the following. Your five finger patterns and chords in C, D, E, F, G, A, and B major. And remember to start on a different key each day. We have a faster goal tempo now of a quarter note equals 120. Also work on your primary chord progression in F and C major.
Practice your improvisation in F major. Work on your woodland jaunt with primary chords and your goal tempo will be a quarter note equals 176. Also learn your melody in G by Kohler, Opus 218, Number 18. The tempo for this should be a quarter note equals 100. And review when the saints go marching in. Remember to do physical warm-ups and cool-downs and stretches. So, with that said, I'll say goodbye for now and remind you to take a few minutes to do some gentle stretching and cooling down once you turn off the video. I hope you enjoy working on your new skills and pieces. And happy practicing! Thank you.